We're here at Tobacco Road Historic Day Escape performing in New York for the first time in their history. You guys know Alex Kolnick? Yeah, I mean, I'm here as a, a fan. It's an honor to be chosen as a representative in some way of, um, you know, as a musician. But I'm also a fan. I think uh, this band is doing something really different. They sound like they're they're ready. Like you could put this band on Mayhem Fest, and they yeah they would kill it. They're highly trained musicians. Um, they're very diverse. That's something I value a lot. Is diversity. I sometimes get flack from the metal police for being <laughs> so diverse, but and they're trained in uh, Cuban rhythms from traditional music, and you hear that in the metal they do. But make no mistake about it, this is some of the heaviest metal you will hear. Obviously, everybody would always think about South American metal as a putura, but it's. It has that soul, but it's different. It has because, as you know, all the rhythms are so different between one place and another, especially in, like in the Caribbean, Latin America. That's what's cool about Escape. That it's not like a no sepultura by any means. It's just like something new for you guys to hear. Really, it's. Yeah, and I, I don't know what um, category exactly Sepultura would fall under, you know, because they sort of followed Thrash. Um, so it came right after Thrash, but it came before a lot of other styles of music um, got prominent. Whereas um, Escape, yeah, it has that sort of post-Thrash South American spirit, but. There's also elements of many other things. There's elements of metalcore, um, blast beats, great um, death metal, black metal, uh, symphonic metal. It just goes so many places. But it's brutal, and it's brutally heavy, but it also is, um, it's just this great sort of mashup of many metal styles that I think only a band from um, a place as rhythmic as Cuba could pull off. It's very exciting and of course what's cool too is you've suffered throughout the changes here in New York and when there's a place like say like Tobacco Road or you know does Brooklyn of course places like that who really still care about our music it's, it's you know and, and, and that's what you hear too because you're like hey you know what we gotta keep this torch going because in case people are watching, of course, Testament is from the Bay Area, but Alex is from New York. You're a New Yorker. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's one of the reasons I had to get out. <laughs> and I, with all due respect, the Bay Area, um, it was this thriving music scene um, at the time that bands like Testament, um, Death Angel, Forbidden, um, Exodus, all those bands started. Um, I would say Metallica too, except they, they moved there. They really started um, elsewhere. You know, they're from sort of south southern mm -hmm, California mm -hmm. and Denmark. <laughs> um, but you know, in the years since then, a lot of venues have closed. Like all the all the early venues where these bands would play have have closed yeah. and weren't replaced. So I think you know there there is still a music scene there, but. Um, it's different than in New York, where every weekend there's every type of music going on. Jazz, blues, metal, punk, and it's, it's exciting. I mean, you know, when people visit here, they're, I think, you know, they're in shock. They don't really know what they're in for. Um, there are a few other places like this where you just say you have a lot of venues in one area. I mean, I think Austin, Texas is one. New Orleans is one, too. And you, you, know, you think of um, Southwest music, you know, in Austin. You, th you think of, uh, you know, Cajun and Creole in New Orleans. But, like, both those places have a lot of different kinds of music as well. And um, New York just has 
so much. So I think it's a perfect place to be doing a, a show like tonight, where you have uh, you have metal from Cuba and supported by some of these great uh, up and coming metal groups. And I bet this is true for you too. Like about three or four weeks ago, you played about four blocks away from me at the Best Buy Theater. Of course, you were the Ben Testament, and you had Overkill with you. And so, you know, it's it's cool because I'm sure for you, it's like, hey, I can play that, I can play that. But it's always about the people who are there who keep this like machine going. This metal machine is only going because of the fans, whether it's oh, yeah. here today or at your bigger shows. And, and, and you know this. Oh yeah. Well, actually, was, I do. Yeah, we played the, the Best Buy with Overkill, and then um, a week later, I flew in on a day off and played uh, The Stone, which is um, this little arts venue run by John Zorn, who yeah, is kind of known in the rock world for producing Mr. Bungle, but he's also an avant-garde jazz musician. And Vernon Reed from Living Color is uh, the uh, curator of certain shows there. So I played there with my trio, which is like this total yeah, small artsy thing. And then, uh, you know, doing a thing like this, I mean, to me, it's all it's all music. It's all it's all related. So I, I can't imagine um, placing limits and just doing one thing. And that's you know another reason why it's just great great to be in New York because you can get away with doing doing all this stuff. And it's cool because obviously Escape broke all these borders, all these barriers. But that's something that you yourself did. You know, like every single person in our especially the heavy metal family of the world, nobody got anything easily because it's still always an outcast genre of music. We're still outcast artists. You know, it never it never changes. Oh, always. Yeah, I do jazz as well. And I, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've taken some heat for that. All the people have gotten much more accepting. But one, one of the reasons um, I think jazz relates to metal, they, they've both sort of had the same disrespect at, from the mainstream <laughs> in different ways. Um, and the, you know, the Grammy Awards is a perfect example. Um, at you know, this recent Grammys, they had three of the, the greatest jazz musicians, um, Kenny Garrett, Chick Corea, and um, Stanley Clark, paying tribute to Dave Brubeck, his legend. And they cut them off after a minute so they could bring out Justin Timberlake. <laughs> um, and this, you know, this is the same organization that, you know, took the hard rock category but merged it with the metal category. So now they're all in one category. They don't even televise it anymore. If, if you're up for the metal Grammy, you're not even televised. It's yeah, that's reflective of how metal has often been seen. You know, there are a bunch of honorary metal bands I would consider uh, Rush an honorary metal band. Um, so Rush finally uh, got inducted. inducted into the Rock Hall of Fame, but it, it took so many years, and it's almost you know it was almost a joke by the time it happened. So much that <laughs> Alex Lifeson did this hilarious speech where they like for several minutes all he said was blah 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 blah, and uh, that, that that was a hell of a statement.